graphs and networks, the Hungarian algorithm for assignment problems with bipartite graphs. Okay, this one's a little tricky. I'm just going to go through the method. I'll make another video where I explain roughly why it works, but you don't need to know that. You do need to be able to use the method. What we're doing here is situations where we have to allocate people to particular tasks and the tasks are weighted. So here I've got what's called a cost matrix. Now cost of doing something can be time or it can be money or it um, can be the distance that people need to travel, but we talk of it in terms of cost. So here we have a matrix showing the time each employee would take to do each of these four tasks that needs to happen. We're only going to do square matrices, four employees, four tasks. And our aim is to determine the best assignment of employee to task so that the overall time required is minimized. And if you think about it, we're paying them for their time, we're also minimizing the cost. So one piece of information you need is I'm going to refer to N, which is the number of allocations needed. And it's also the same as number of rows and columns. So in this, N is four. All right, we've got like about seven steps here. So bear with me. Here is our cost matrix. Step one is subtract the lowest value in each row from every value in that row. So remember, rows go across this row. Lowest value is 30. So we're taking 30 away from every value here. 0, 10, 20, 30. Lowest value is 30, so we're taking 30 away from every value here. Oops. Can't add or subtract in this case. Lowest value is 30. So we're taking 30 away from each one here. Lowest value is 20. So I like to think I got all of those right. So we've taken the lowest value in each row away from every value in that row. Step two. Now we're going to do this step several times after every change we make. And this is checking have we got enough minimums? So we're looking for lots and lots of, we're looking for enough zeros that every person can be assigned to a task with a relative zero cost here. Put the minimum number of lines required to cover all the zero values. Uh, horizontal and vertical lines only. So lines go through rows and columns. So there we go, put the minimum number of lines through rows and columns to cover all the zero values. The way you do it is you start by going through any row or column that's got the most zeros. So column A here has two zeros. Put a line through that. Then there's only two other zeros, so you might as well just go straight down through here. You could have gone across for these two, that would be fine as well. But I've got a minimum of three lines to cover all the zeros. 
Now the check that you're going to keep doing is this. If you needed n number of lines, then we've got enough zeros. And if we've got enough zeros, we go to step six. If we don't have n lines, so we don't have four lines, we go to the next step, which is step three. And we keep making changes until we've got n lines, that is four lines in this one, through the matrix. Because that will tell you that you can allocate it perfectly. Now step three. Last time we looked at the rows. Now we're going to look at the columns, but it's only the columns without a zero. So if a column doesn't have a zero, then we're going to do the same subtraction thing for the columns. Subtract the lowest value in the column from every value in the column. And this was actually why it's quite useful if you can choose rows or columns here. I just chose to do columns because that's got a zero, that's got a zero, that's got a zero. This one doesn't. So we put all the other values in, in the, so in the columns that do have zeros. Those go in, these go in. But column C doesn't have a zero. The smallest value is 10, so I'm taking away 10 from every value. Like so. Step four, check the minimum lines again. If you needed N lines, great, we go to step six. Otherwise, step five, no, step five A, because step five is a little bit complicated. So we'll check our minimum lines. Any column or row that's got the most zeros, so that's got two and that's got two. So we'll deal with those two first. And then I only need one more line to get this zero in, three lines, we're not up to four lines, which we need, because N is four, I need four lines. Step 5a. I'll just turn my pages over here. All right. Step 5a. First up, identify the smallest uncovered value. So that would be 10. Now, might need some more space here. Add that value to any value covered by two lines. So, these two, Xenophon A and Xenophon D, are covered by two lines. So I'm going to add that smallest value of 10 to those. Subtract that value from all uncovered values.
So you might actually find it easier to write in all the other values. So all the ones that are just covered by one line stay the same. because they were only covered by one line and the uncovered values I'm taking away 10 from each one. Alright, step 5b, check the lines again. You'll notice after every change we're checking the lines. So that is one way you can make this a little bit easier. So remember, lines go through the rows and columns with the most zeros first. That one. Now, this one, if we go through, we cover up two zeros. Yep. And then I need two more lines to cover those. Bingo. I've got n equals four. Number of lines, four lines, we're good. We move on to step six. Draw a, technically it should be a directed bipartite graph. Directed bipartite graph. And you're going to put an edge for every zero. Wendy has a 0 to A, B, and C. So Wendy can do A or B or C. The little arrow makes it directed. I don't actually think it's needed, to be honest. Xenophon can do B or C. So I'm leaving the arrows out because I'm. it makes it cleaner to me. Yolanda can do D only. Zelda can do A only. And remember when we've done our bipartite graph, when we're doing our allocations, then we start with the people who can have to do something in particular. Zelda has to do... S Wait a minute, what did I do? Zelda's A. I'm sorry, people. Sorry. Zelda has to do A, Yolanda has to do D, and Wendy and Xenophon can do either Wendy does A, Xenophon does, sorry, Wendy does B, Xenophon does C, or the other way around. So, step seven, make the allocations and determine minimum cost. Zelda must do A. And you go back to the original cost matrix and the cost for Zelda to do A is 20. Yolanda must do D. Original cost matrix, Yolanda doing D is 30, and then Wendy can do B at 40 minutes, or C at 50 minutes, Xenophon, oh it's an F, sorry Xenophon, can do, now I usually put them in pairs, so if Wendy does B, Xenophon does C, or B, 30 minutes, and you'll notice that those two both add up to the same amount, which is why either of those pairings is fine. So the minimum time is 20 plus 30 plus 40 plus 40 
or 20 plus 30 plus 50 plus 30, and either of those equal 130 minutes. So you have 15 minutes there to do the Hungarian algorithm. What fun. Good luck.